Hello and welcome to a special edition of Cracking the Cryptic, where I'm quite excited about trying this puzzle. Uh, it's called Two Truths and a Lie, and it's by Zetamath. Now, this puzzle, I think, would ordinarily have appeared on the channel, assuming one of us could have solved it, because the feedback about this puzzle is, well, that it's quite incredible. It is meant to be, or well, some people have used the words, best Sudoku of all time about this one. Um, now, why are we not trying to do it on the channel then? Well, it's because it does have an incredibly long rule set. And in fact, even though uh, the rules are already incredibly long on the right hand side of the screen now, um, basically none of the rules are actually explained on the right hand side of the screen because it just says each of the following standard clue types occurred. So our reluctance to do this on the channel is to do with the fact that it would be very inaccessible to anybody who has never seen an advanced Sudoku before. It would literally, you know, it would rely on an awful lot of prior knowledge. And on Cracking the Cryptic, we do try and make every video, every video on the channel as accessible as possible. So with apologies to Zetamath, um, uh, I'm going to uh, I'm going to do it for our patrons only. And I hope I'll be able to show you how to solve it. So let's go through the rules first. Normal Sudoku rules apply. Each of the following standard clue types occurs exactly three times in the grid. White dots, black dots, arrows, sandwich, X's, V's, thermos, quadruples, odds, grey circles. Uh, okay, yeah, there are some of those. Um, well, there should be three of those, I see. Three of those. Evens, grey squares, those. Uh, Renban and German whispers. So Renbans are purples. Three Rembans, German Whispers are greens, three of those. Uh, for each of those clue types, exactly two of the appearances of that clue are correct and the other is incorrect. Square brackets, a clue is incorrect if it is not fully correct. E.g. an incorrect quadruple might see one of the digits but not all of them. Right, so Obviously, in order to even start this puzzle, we are going to have to understand what it means to have a standard clue type of all these different types. So let me run through that. Um, so let's we've got standard. Oh, sorry, my cough's coming back. Standard arrows here. So if this arrow was true, these three cells would add up to the circle. Um, now, white dots, we've got some of those. These would have to be consecutive. These contain consecutive digits if they're true. Black dots have to have one numbers double the other in one, some order if that one is true. Um, white dots, black dots, arrow, sandwich. Yeah, we've got some sandwich clues. So these clues here, if they're correct, are telling you the sum of the cells sandwiched between the one and the nine in each row or column. So, I mean, this is not going to be, well, I suppose it could be correct. I was about to say it couldn't be correct because it's on a black dot, but of course the black dot could be lying. Um, so if those three squares added up to 13, this would be a correct sandwich sandwich clue because the sum of the digits sandwiched between the one and the nine in the row would equal 13. Um, what else have we got here? Thermos, oh, X's and V's, good grief. Um, X's, so an X clue is correct if it's two cells summed to 10. A V clue is correct if it's two, uh, two clues summed to five. Thermos are correct if they increase from the bulb end. So if this one went one, two, three, it would be a correct form of thermo. Three, six, nine would be a correct form of thermo. Um, so that you need to rise as mercury would rise as the temperature increases. You must rise on a correct thermo. Um, Ren bands, well, odd, odd, odd circles. So these squares are odd if they're correct. These are even if they're correct. Um, Ren bands are purple. So Ren bands are a consecutive sequence um, of, not, uh, of digits, basically, that can, that can be in any order, non-repeating digits. But obviously, these are all in the same box, so they're always going to be non-repeating. So if this was one, two, three, that would absolutely be a way that, as would that, one, three, two, that would be absolutely fine. Um, now, also German whispers, wasn't it? So the green lines are meant to be German whispers, if they're correct. And the German whispers lines, they, you must differ by five in adjacent cells. So if this square was a three, this square would now have to be at least an eight. 
because it has to be 5 different from 3 and obviously we can't put negative numbers in a Sudoku so that would have to be 8 or 9 and then it could bounce back the other way down there. So that's how all of these clues work if they're correct. It's an incredible idea this. <laughs> The way to play is to click the link under the video as usual or on the patron introduction. I don't know, but I'm going to have a go now. Let's get cracking. Um, now, with these um, puzzles that involved lying clues, this this is always a nightmare is, is actually getting cracking because we've got to work out what on earth to look at first. So I'm going to take a punt and say it's not going to be the thermos. These thermos are too short. Um, yeah. <laughs> I don't really want to look at the middle box. That's not screaming at me. Oh, oh that's a bit interesting. Look, in box two, we've got the three possible even cells. So. So two of these three are even. Oh, no, nearly. I was about to say that means this. But all three, are all well, these two black dots can't be true. That's nearly right. If this, um, if both of these black dots were, were correct, there'd basically be two ways of doing this. It could be one, two, four, or two, four, eight. And obviously we could reverse the order. So it could be two, four, eight eight like this or one two four like this now two four eight is actually not possible here because we know there must be two even digits in those three cells and there are only four even digits between the numbers one and nine so is there a reason this can't be one two four does that break the arrows somehow ah Ah, for, right, forget that for a second. Those arrows can't both be correct. Um, because if they were both correct, these digits in the top row would have a minimum value of 21. Uh, the, the triangular number for six, we'd have to put six numbers in here. The minimum we can make them would be one, two, three, four, five, and six. There's no way of making those circles add to 21 without using a double digit number. So one of these is wrong. And that means that one is correct. There we go. We've got a deduction. Um, that's a three three cell arrow. So that's got to be six, seven, eight, or nine. Oh, it's on a black dot, but the black dot might be a lie. <laughs> ah. Um, okay. So one of these is correct. Ah. Ah. Yes. Okay. Now I've got somewhere. This can't be true. Well, when I say this can't be true, I mean both of these black dots now definitely can't be true. We ruled out 248 before, but the other option of 124 is also now impossible because one of these arrows is correct. And if the one and the two have already gone in the row, you'd have to put 345 minimum on the arrow, which is already 12. And you can't put 12 into a Sudoku cell. So. So. One of these black dots is incorrect, which means that one is correct. Now that can't have a seven or a nine. In it. This is already extremely interesting and clever. So that's got to be a three or a four. So six isn't possible. Six would have to go with one, two, three on the arrow and three in the black dot because we need one of the digits to be half the other. So six, three, one, two, three repeats the three in the box. So that's eight and we've got a digit straight away. Ah, this is fine. Now this this arrow has to be uh, 125 because it can't be 134 anymore. Um, now, what is that doing? <laughs> What's that doing up here? Um, we've got a V here. We've got sort of the bird. <laughs> it's like a bird, an owl. Maybe it's a raven. It's like a it's like a raven on a bust of palace just above my chamber door. Um, and his eyes have all the seeming of a demon's that is dreaming. And the lamplight o'er him streaming throws his shadow on the floor. And my soul from out that shadow that lies floating on the floor shall be lifted 
Nevermore. Um, now I'm getting distracted now. If that's true, if the fee is true, it has to be a 2-3. Um, if the V is false, these two V's have to be true. That doesn't look very appetizing. Ah, that's complicated, but not correct. Right, this is interesting. Right, look at these two V's. She's already quite... The other thing I'm noticing is that I had to consider these as pairs. Now I'm considering these as pairs. I'm just noticing that the clues always seem... Sorry, my cough is coming back with a vengeance. Um, I'm just noticing that the clues seem to be arranged very much sort of around the symmetry of the central column of the grid. Anyway, that, that's by the by. So the question I was asking is, is it possible for both of these V's to be true? Now, if they're both true, that means these two cells have to be selected from one, two, and three. Now, that's immediately interesting. These are Renban lines. Now, it's not possible both of these Renban lines is false. So one of them, at least, is true. You can see now, therefore, that Whichever one is true, because there's a four here, would have to be a one, two, three string. But that's going to break these two cells. They're, they're going to both have to be five. So it's not actually possible, I don't think, for these Vs to both be true. And if these Vs are not both true, that one is true, and it can't be a four. So I think that's a two, three pair. And we know one of these black dots only is correct. Hmm, okay. Now do we know... I'm now wondering about this, rent. that's a Renban line. If that was true, it now can't, it would have to be a five, six, seven Renban line. That's the only option it's got because it can't have four, eight, two or three on it. So you can't put one on it because you can't put consecutive digits. With one, it can't have nine on it for the same, same reason. Hmm. Is there a reason that can't be five, six, seven? Or maybe, if this is an incorrect Remban line, both of these Remban lines is correct. If both of these Remban lines is correct, there's a four here. Yeah, oh, yeah, okay. It's, a, it's the corollary of what we were doing before. Um, it's not possible for both of these Remban lines to be correct in the same way it wasn't possible for both of those V's to be correct because the only way of making this work is to select a string of digits from the digits 1, 2 and 3 so one of these is 1, 2 and 3 and the other one is going to be 5, 6, 7 or 6, 7, 8 or 7, 8, 9 the, po uh, yeah, the point is you can't, con you can't select two sequences of three digits from the digits 5, 6, 7, 8 and 9 you can only get one string of three from it that is gorgeous because now I know that now I know that it's not possible for these to both be correct. That is correct, and it is a real Rembrandt line, and it is five six seven, which means that's not five. And oh, in fact, that's now a one because there's a two up there. This is a nine. So now, now I can't put. Now, one of these Remban lines is being selected from not 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 anymore, but 6, 7, 8, 9. So the correct Remban line has a 7 and an 8 on it. This is awesome, isn't it? It's awesome. Ah, and I've got a 3 here, sandwich clue. 
So, if that's correct, now, yeah, you'd have to put 139 or 931 on a Remban line, which is going to break the Remban line. But this could be wrong. Hmm, okay, um, 4, 5 here. If that's correct, you'd have to put the 4 there and the 5 here. Ooh, if this is correct, you have to go 4, 5. And if that whispers line was then correct, you'd have to go 9, 8. Oh no, that might not, that might be an incorrect. Ah! <laughs> We don't know. We've not looked at white dots. Yet. Oh, no, this white dot is wrong. So that is a correct white dot. So you would go, you would go nine, eight. That's a correct. There's, I wonder if there's a way of sort of marking which of these digits is correct. These are both correct dots. I'll make them orange, I think. Orange means correct. Um, What about this? So the question again is, if this German whispers line is correct, you'd have to have two low digits here, which would have to be one and four. Oh, but then, oh no, I suppose the X could be, I was gonna say that doesn't work because you can't have, because the X that has, the one on it is going to need a nine next to it, but of course that could be a lie. Oh, <laughs> um, okay. So what does that mean? So maybe we go again. Can you? Is it possible both of those are correct? If both of those remember, uh, sorry, German whispers lines is correct. You've got to put eights and nines on these German whispers lines. Yeah, ooh, you'd have to have eight on one, nine on the other, because each one of them would have, and that would have to be in the middle. Oh, that's that's beautiful. Oh, Satamath, that is beautiful. Right, I understand this. So again, we're making progress by considering the sort of symmetrical clues. If we do that, which one of these, or how are we gonna fill these? The point about a German whispers line is it always oscillates between high and low digits, but we've only got two high digits left to use. So we've got to make sure that we don't oscillate high, low, high, because that will use two high digits on this, and it's not possible to use no high digits on this. So the only way, if this, these are both true, you have to put an eight, nine pair there and there. And now what you've done, because these orange clues are correct, one of these is a nine, whichever one is a nine has an eight in one of those, and that breaks the eight, nine pair in the middle box. Isn't that beautiful? That's really clever. So that means one of these is not correct, which means this one is correct, and that is a one, four pair. Wow. Now I'm gonna try this again. So is it possible? No, this is great. This is great. Again, now we just we we just we just take the the clues that are symmetrical around column five. We say, is it possible both of those is correct? No, because there's a one in one of these, and that will put a nine in one of those. So that one is correct, and it's not one nine. So that's two eight, three seven, or four six. We've got good lift levels of pencil marking there. Um, Okay. So it's not Maverick today. It sounds like a combine harvester or something. Um, so one of these is correct. Oh, I see. And it must be the f it must be the digit that's attaching to the four that's correct. So one of those squares has got to be a six. Um, oh, and I suppose, yeah, okay, and one of these is odd, because that because it's a one, and that's in a square, so one of the squares is incorrect, which means that square is correct, and that's a two, <laughs> two, three go in, 
We know one of these black dots is correct, so that has a six next to it. This is ridiculously clever, say to math. I love this so far. Um, so now, hmm, what's that doing to the world? I don't know whether to look at the arrows. So now we can't put three on an arrow. It doesn't seem a very big restriction. Three or six on an arrow. So you can't have, you can't have an arrow adding to nine now. Is that true? Because nine is either two, three, four, one, three, five, or one, two, six. Yeah, so neither of these arrow cells, whichever one is correct now, has to be a six, seven, or an eight, and has to have a one on it. Which is not very surprising. And in fact, well, mm. the other thing we could look at is the 13 clue. So you can't put one or nine in either of those cells because it's already appeared in one of these cells in box two. So 13. Right, here is something. How are we going to make this 13 work then? This is beautiful again. This is beautiful again. It doesn't work. I don't think. I don't think there is any way of making 13 as a correct sandwich total. Because we we can't put the 1 and the 9 on the same, in the same box. Because you can't put 13 in between them. That will not work. So... We've got to span boxes to create our th sum of 13. Well, how can we possibly do that? The only box we can span is this one. So we're going to have to put the 1 and the 9 like that. And these three squares are going to have to sum up to 13. But we know that two of them sum to 9. So the other one has to be a 4 and can't be. So that just doesn't work at all. There's no other way of doing that, is there? questioning myself now. No, if neither of these can be a 1 or a 9, I cannot... There's no other way of doing it. There's, there is just no other way of doing it. It's impossible. So you can't put 1 and 9 there. Well, you could, because that 13 clue is wrong. But if the 13 clue is wrong, the 24 clue is correct, and the 3 clue is correct. And if the 3 clue is correct... You've got to put a 3 in one of those squares. Because look, you can't put 1s and 9s here. So this 3 clue is going to be something like this. It's going to be 1, 9 with a 3 in the middle. But we don't know whether that goes there or it goes there. 9, 3. Ah, oh, good grief. Right, okay, yeah, we do know which way round it goes because of the... This is, this is just intricacy, like you cannot believe... So we proved this was correct, and it can't be 1, 9. So it's either 6, 4, 7, 3, or 8, 2. Now, we know one of these Ren bands is correct, but we also know we have to put a 1, 3, 9 string in. Let's try and put the 1, 3, 9 string here and see what happens. 3 are 1s and 9s in some order. Maverick's taken off. Hello, Maverick. Now, these squares now have to be, you've guessed it, 6, 7 and 8. And that breaks this. It's impossible now to make a 10 total. You can't use anything. So this is not correct, which means that's not correct, which means that square is a 3. This square is a 1, 9 pair. That's not 3, 7 anymore. Um, that's not a 3, obviously. Uh, these, This is the 6, 7, 8 triple. Ooh. That V is not now correct. So that means that one is correct, which means that's a 2. Now that circle is incorrect, because obviously circles are meant to be odd. That circle is correct. Right, so that circle is also correct and has to be an odd digit. So that's 1, 3, 5, 7 or 9. It's not 7. It's got 7 above it in the box. 
Ah, 1, 2, and 3 used up here means this can't be 1, 9, 2, 8, or 3, 7. So that's a 4, 6 pair. 8 has to go there in box, uh, box 9. That's got to be a 5, 7 pair. That gets rid of 5 here, look. 7 must be in one of those two cells. 4, 6 must be in one of <laughs> these two cells, excuse me. Try not to have another coughing fit. Oh, if that 2, 3 was correct, look, you'd have to put the 2 and the 3 there. I'll put 2s and 3s up there. Do we, what do we know about x's at the moment? Oh, we know that's a correct x. Oh, yeah, and one of these is correct. The 24 is correct, isn't it? What do we know about... Ah, ooh. Okay, maybe this is where we look next, because this cell has to be one of the crusts of the sandwich. Nine, eight, seven, yeah, okay. ah, ooh, yes, okay. Okay, we can do this. Where does the other crust of the sandwich go in column nine? The answer is interesting, I think. Well, clearly it's not here. It can't be anywhere here, because if we try and put it here, we've got to make a three cell sandwich sum to 24 without using a nine. It's impossible because nine's one of the sandwich crusts. So, so this square can't be one or nine. That square can't be one or nine. That then has to be one or nine. Why do I say that? Well, if we put the one or the nine here, then these cells are adding 24 plus one plus nine is 34, which means this square has to add up to 11 to ensure the whole column adds up to 45. That doesn't work. So this must be the one of the nine, which is a bit weird, putting it in a thermobulb. But this thermobulb might, of course, be wrong. Um, I suppose we can limit this square now, can't we? Because, yeah, if we've got 24 there, plus 10 is 34. These two outies have to sum to 11. We've got five or seven here. So this is four or six and it's not six. Oh, good grief, right? That's a four, which might actually work for the arrow. Four has to be in one of those cells. Oh, four, look, is doing some work down here as well. What's that six doing? Oh, I see, that's joining to the four. Whichever one of these is a four has to have a six next to it because the one can't have a nine next to it. <laughs> um, hmm. Okay, if that's a four, that's a seven, isn't it? Because we needed the outies to add to 11. So this is now a five. These four squares have to be the other digits, which are two, three, five, and eight. Ah, so if, if this is correct, you have to put two, three here. This would have to be five, eight. Might work. Um, Okay. Okay, so what does that mean? <sighs> hmm, I have not got a clue. <laughs> I have not got a clue. Uh, so, <laughs> um, I'm not even sure where to look. I've got to be honest, I'm not seeing much here at all. Don't think we can resolve which of these is correct. That four is interesting. So if that four, if this is correct, if this is correct, well, okay. 
here yeah okay let's think about these arrows because what we can, there are some digits you can never put on a three cell arrow if it's correct you can't put seven eight or nine on them now you also in this case you can't put six on either so the only digit or three so the only digits we're allowed to choose from for the correct three cell arrow are ones twos fours and fives now we can't put four and five on that arrow or once we add the one or the two to it it will add up to too many so it's either one two four or it's one two five that means that one of these squares whichever one is correct is a seven or an eight that doesn't rule this out from being four because this might be the lying one seven or oh sorry excuse me seven or eight in one of the two circles hang on haven't those squares got to be selected from Ah, oh, that's a little bit interesting. Yeah, if we if we pencil mark the options left in box two now, five, six, seven, and eight, I think, and those are not six. So ah, so now we've got a virtual five, seven, eight triple here. One of these squares is definitely seven or eight, whichever is the correct arrow. That's going to join with this these two squares and make a five, seven, eight triple either there or there. So that means the rest of this row is one, three, four, six, or nine. One, six, or nine there. One, three, four, six, or nine here. Now this is on the bulb. One, three, four, six, or nine. This is really weird, pencil marking nines into the bulbs of thermos. <sighs> hmm. But I don't think we're going to know. I don't think we know which, which is which, do we? Um... <laughs> um, how can we learn which is which? That is our challenge. I really want this to be the correct arrow. That would be a 1, 2. This would be a 7. 1, 2, 7, that becomes a 9, that becomes a 6, that, that becomes a 9, that becomes a 1, 1, 2, 4, so this would become 9, 6, 7, 9, 6, 7, this would become 1, 3, 4, not seeing that that breaks which does suggest it's probably correct now what about if that's if this is the incorrect arrow that arrow is got to be one two five and that's an eight oh oh that's really right i've got something yeah okay so look at row one one of one of these um yeah one of these arrows has got a one on it. The other one has a nine on it because I've not put I've not put one and nine in here. Obviously, wherever I put the nine, that that arrow is broken. So one of these has a nine and is the broken arrow. One of them has a one and is the real arrow. So there's you can't put them both in one of these triples. That means that in this domino there must be a one or a nine which goes with that. So that square's not one or nine. That's That's got to be a six. Oops. 
there's a one or a nine up here, depending on which, oh, whoops, I didn't want to do that. I wanted to corner pencil mark. Um, <laughs> so now there's no sixes over here. We've got, what's this six? Ah, six is going on the thermo here. So if six is on the thermo where there is a five already, in the column. So if this is a correct thermo, the four and the six must be together on the thermo, which means that digit would have to be a four or a six, which is a correct, a correct white dot. So if that was a correct four or six, this would have to, it couldn't be five or seven. So it would have to be three, wouldn't it? three flanked by eight and nine. Oh no, but that might not be correct. Ah, <laughs> it's impossible to keep track of these blooming rules. Um, hang on a minute. So if this is correct, that's definitely a four or a six because the four and the six have to be together on the thermo. That's also correct. So that is three, five or seven, and it can't be five or seven. This would have to be a three. I don't know, maybe that's Maybe that's possible again. So maybe the correct question, ah, I keep doing this wrong, I think. What I think you're meant to do with this puzzle is always ask whether the cells or the, the clues that are symmetric around column five are both correct. So is there a reason both of those are not correct? That's the next question. Both of these are correct. That's a one. That would have to be at least three. So these have to be a bit bigger. One, don't know. Oh, six. That means that can't be a six. Look. Oh, that's nice. That's going to get me some stuff. That's a six, therefore. So that must be four. That must be one. Six. Uh, that's not six. Oh, <laughs> oh, you rotten thing. What's that doing? It's doing nothing, I don't think. Six does nothing. Four. Four can't go. Ah. Wow. Okay. No, I'm maligning this, this four unfairly. Four can't go in this quadruple now at all. It just can't go in it. So this is the lie. That means that's correct. And that's correct. So there must be a three, four in there. I don't think that does anything. And there must be a two, three in here. Aha, aha. Now, now, where's that two, three go? It goes exactly there. So that becomes a five, eight pair. That's going to make that much more difficult to be a real thermo now. That can't be one eight nine. So it'd have to be one five. One five and this square would have to be six. Can't be six. Can't be nine. Seven or eight. One five seven or eight. Oh no no no. Got it. Got it. Right, this is beautiful. This is beautiful again from Zeta Math. Right, again. We must always ask the question, is it possible for both of these symmetrical clues to be correct? No, is the answer now. Because if these are both correct, look what happens. That's a one. That's a three, at least. It doesn't matter what it is. The whole point is you can't put two, uh, two and three in this row anymore. Where do you put two and three in this row? If that's one, and that, if that's one, and that's five, and that's three, say, 
I've got to put two and three in the row. It can't go anywhere. This has to be higher than three. This has to be higher than three. I can put one of two and three in there, but not both. Isn't that beautiful again? Wow. So it's not the case. Hang on, let me just make sure we've got, we're right back where we were. So these are both, these aren't both true. So this is true. And now, because there's a five here, the four and the six, it's either going to go four, six, something, or four, six, something. So that square is now definitely four or six. And I think, I think that makes that square a three, because it cannot be a five or a seven. Now, that means that square is a two, that square is a three. Now that these squares are not three anymore, this is a three, so this has got to be a four. <laughs> that means that this three, four thing gets resolved. I don't believe it. So now that's, okay, so now that being a four means that's the six. This square has to be lower than four and it's not two or three, so that's forced to be a one. One is forced into one of those squares. One can't go on the Kropke dot because that would be a two and that will break that square. So one goes here. I should be able to work out which of these German whispers is correct, I would have thought, in a second or two. Let me just stare at this for a moment. Uh, three now is in one of those cells. These squares have got to include seven and nine. This one is giving me the one and the nine in box nine, look. So that's a nine now. So this, ah, so that's the broken one. Right, so this is a correct one. That doesn't start with a nine, therefore. Um, that's not a nine because we've got this nine here. So, <laughs> does that mean we, we have we even worked out which of the arrows is correct now? I think we should have done, but I don't see how to do it. Um, what about, what are those three squares, I suppose? That's probably a fair question. They are two, three, and seven. So that's down to just being three or seven now. Two, three, seven. Ah, so it's still possible that this is correct arrow. It could be four, two, seven, and put the one there. And that doesn't seem to break. Five, eight. Six, seven would go there. It really doesn't seem to break, actually. The other option is this is correct, and that's one, two, five, which would make this a three or a four, this a three or a four. Um, I'd have to put seven up here. Hang on, hang on a minute. Oh no, that would be okay, would it? One, two, five, eight. Three, four. Yeah, hang on, where's nine going? That's the point, isn't it? Yeah, that is the point. Where's nine going now? This, this becoming nine rules nine out of here. So nine is now on the arrow here. So this is the correct arrow. Good grief, Simon. Come on, get a grip. Seven, two, one, all go into the grid. That becomes a three. This is a five or an eight. Ignore the thermo because it's nonsense. This is two and seven. We know the order because that is thermo is true. That's forced to be a one. That seven means we get the five, eight pair here. We get the six, seven pair here. These squares are five, eight, nine in some order, and we oh yeah we can't we can't do anything with that knowledge. That's got to be a three or a four. So I've got a three, four pair in column two, so that's no longer a three down at the bottom. And we are actually slowly, admittedly, but slowly but surely running out of clues here. So I've got a correct. Kropke dot. 
and I've still got to work out which of these German whispers lines is correct. One of them is correct, one of them is wrong. So if this one is correct, this would have to be an eight or a nine because it's got to be a high digit. Look, it sees one, two, three, and four. So this would have to be a high digit. It can't be six or seven. This would be eight or nine. And that would also be a high digit. And then that would have to be a two or a four. But that looks not unreasonable, if I'm honest. Um, four. Ah, oh no, here we go. We can break it. Where does four go in this box? Four has to go there, which forces this to not be a correct German whispers line. So this is a correct German whispers line. This has to be high and it has to be eight or nine now, which means that has to be seven, eight or nine. And if that's a high, this must be a low and is forced to be a two. That place is two here. Wow. Wow. So now this square is an eight or a nine. And oh, okay. I was about to say that that's going to give me some digits over here, but I don't actually think it is. That's not a six. So this is five, seven, eight, or nine, and it literally can be any of them. Don't believe it. So really, this whispers line's been very um, underwhelming, hasn't it? It's really not done very much for us at all. Right, I think we need to return to the world of Sudoku then. Maybe Sudoku is going to be our friend. You know I never like to overindulge myself with Sudoku in Sudoku puzzles, but it does appear that we may have to. Um, this 2 is giving me the 2 and the 5. That's giving me the 5 and the 8. Right, that is giving me the 9. That forces that to be an 8. Right, so this was sensible. <laughs> it's very sensible, actually. Um, good grief. Okay, the whole thing is getting is, is getting filled by Sudoku. Surprise, surprise. Those squares there have got to be a 7-8 pair. That's actually fixed, believe it or not. Okay, so suddenly we have breakthrough. So now that's got to be a five or a six by Sudoku, which means that's the only place for a one in row five. That fixes the nine. Wow, what a puzzle. Um, okay, and then we have to pause. Do we know we can place a one here? So let's have a look down at the bottom. We need three, four, and six. So that's a six, it's a naked single. That's a three naked single. That's a four. That's a four. That's a three. Whoops. Um, that's a four. That's a three. Ignore the arrow. <laughs> that arrow is nonsense. Six finishes the top of the grid. Seven goes there. Nine goes here. These squares here are two, three, and five. Yep, I can do that. Do that. Do that. Great. That's a six now. That six and five <laughs> gets finished. Seven gets finished here. This becomes a six, eight pair. That's done. I don't believe it. Six, eight. This is a five, eight pair. That's got to be five in the column. That's got to be eight. Five, nine. Is that done? Oh, oh no, I'm not going to get a deadly pattern, am I? Please, please, no. No, I'm not. Good. Five, five goes here. Nine goes here. Nine goes there. Seven goes there. That looks good. Yes. Wow. That is... That is brilliant. Full stop. That is absolutely brilliant. I now understand why some people are calling it one of the best Sudokus of all time. It's because it is one of the best Sudokus of all time. The, the, the cleverest and most elegant thing for me about this puzzle is that Zeta Math has made it fair and beautiful at the same time. And the way that he's done that is by allowing the logic to flow from a series of sequential similar questions. So I don't know how many times I did it in this puzzle, but I, yeah, I mean, I think you could start there even. Is it possible those two are the same? But over the course of the puzzle, we then asked at a later stage, is it possible those two are the same? 
Is it possible these two well, are correct? Is it possible they're both true? Is it possible both of these is, is true? Is it possible both of these is true? Is it possible both of these is true? In fact, they did turn out to be true. I think that's the only thing that was symmetrically true. Is it possible both of those is true? Both of these is true? And so on and so forth. It's just, it's ridiculously clever. Honestly, that is stunning. Stunning Zeta Math. I, I look forward to the comments. Please, if you're a patron of the channel, if you watch this and you enjoyed the video, and if you enjoyed the puzzle, please drop a comment in so that Zeta Math can get some plaudits for what is an amazing, amazing Sudoku. It's brilliant. And see you later on for another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.